Hi, everyone, and welcome to the MyConsultant.ca show. I'm Sarah Ostapchuk. And I'm Joshua Pentelaresco. And we're here to help you with the Canadian immigration process. This show is designed to be a brief way to inform you on Canadian immigration news headlines, immigration policy and program concepts, and introduce you to industry experts. It was a pretty big week for news, right, Josh? Very big week for news there, Sarah. Mr. Fraser of the IRCC is planning to raise the number of Canadian immigrants as a method to address labor shortages in the country. He plans on increasing those numbers or that were already at 1.2 million uh, by the end of 2023. He mentioned in his interview that he's on track of the goal of 401,000 new immigrants for 2021. So there's definitely a lot of plans to keep getting more and more people to come to the country. Yeah, I think it's uh, it's really impressive and it's uh, really ambitious, but it um, it's not without you know, evidence that it can be done. I mean, considering the pandemic was such a big deal for a lot of industries, especially immigration, that we've been hitting the goals is really impressive. It's going to be interesting to see because, again, we're still short from the previous years. So mm -hmm. I'm going to be kind of curious how that all plays out, but we right. will see. Um, it's definitely an ambitious plan for sure. And that wasn't the only thing that happened this week, wasn't there, Sarah? No, there was also some pretty big news on November 23rd. The College of Immigration and Citizenship Consultants officially opened a plan that was put forward by former Minister of Immigration, the Honorable Marco Mendicino. The college will be the official regulator of immigration and citizenship consultants across Canada. So this is basically to help improve, uh, you know, oversight of the whole process and maybe just help with the like security kind of deal. For sure, it's supposed to help eliminate unauthorized practitioners who wish to take advantage of the public of people trying to immigrate to Canada. So it just it's further oversight that already did exist um, to help people come here with the best services possible. And that headlines were not the only real big thing that happened uh, for the first time on the show and won't be the last. I got the opportunity to interview an immigration consultant. Her name is Nirja Bandari and. It was awesome. Like, I really enjoyed having that conversation. Yeah, and I really enjoyed listening to it. And I'm really excited for everybody else to see the interview as well. Yeah. So for the, this week in Concepts of Immigration, Sarah is going to educate us on what is an immigration consultant and what exactly do they do? Right. As a sort of introduction to Nirja, we thought it would be fitting to talk about what immigration consultants do, what their role is for you as an immigrant. And with that, let's go to concept this week's Concepts in Immigration. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to Concepts in Immigration. This segment today will be dedicated to discussing Canadian immigration consultancy in general. This is a way to introduce our interviewee of the day, which is a Canadian consultant in immigration, and we're very excited to talk with her next. But first, let's talk about the industry as a whole. You might have picked Canada as your aspiring new home because of the opportunity here or the diversity or inclusivity, but we also have a wealth of very well trained competent workers in the immigration consultancy industry. Who better to assist you on your journey than somebody dedicated to this very field. So what is an immigration consultant and what do they do. An immigration consultant is a representative that you can hire in order to help you with your process to come to Canada. They explain to you the immigration and citizenship process that is unique in Canada, and they advise you on what to do, what streams to take, the best way possible to get you your permanent residency here. In addition, they fill out your applications for you and submit them, and so therefore they deal with the Canadian government on your behalf. It's important to note that though an immigration consultant can be very useful to you on your journey to permanent residency in Canada, they are not necessary in order to be accepted into the country. If your immigration consultant is charging you a fee, they must be authorized to do so. Being authorized means that they are a member in good standing with the Immigration Consultants of Canada Regulatory Council. This council is a body of people that are meant to regulate the industry and make sure that practitioners are providing you with legitimate services under Canadian regulations. They are there to determine any fraudulent activity and protect you from the harms of fraud. 
Unfortunately, there is a lot of fraud in the Canadian immigration consulting industry. Fraud would mean that an immigration consultant is posing as authorized and charging you a fee when they are indeed not, and therefore not giving you the services that you are paying for. In order to determine if your immigration consultant is authorized, all you need to do is go to the Immigration Consultants of Canada Regulatory Council website and click on Verify My Immigration Consultant. Please do this step before you hire a consultant because there are many competent and well-trained consultants out there who can help you, many of which you can find on the myconsultant.ca webpage. So please do that in order for you to get the best services possible. Today we have one of these consultants on our show. Nirja Bandari is an immigration consultant that you can also find on myconsultant.ca. And up next, she will be interviewed by Josh and she will be sharing her professional background, her perspective and some advice on how to become a permanent resident here in Canada. Let's check it out. Welcome everyone to our very first interview segment. I'm kind of excited about this. I hope I get her name right. Nirja Bandari is my very first guest. So welcome to the show, Nirja. Thank you so much. Okay, what is your official title? Like, what does an immigration consultant do? Like, like specifically, what do you do specifically? And so, yeah. So a lot of people in um, other countries will call me. Uh, so I want to talk to you as uh, my lawyer. So I have to let them know that I'm not a lawyer. I'm an immigration consultant. And my very focus is just immigration and nothing else. Actually, I would not know any other field of law except immigration. And that also just for Canada. So I'm licensed to practice immigration uh, in the immigration field for Canadian immigration. And that's what people call me for when they want to come here as a worker, they want to come here as a student or come here to settle permanently. So that's when we people call me. Okay, so what, do you have like an area of specialty, like what you do, like like people in particular you help, or is it anybody? Um, I'm a very emotional person myself, and um, somehow when I started, I was happy to do whatever I would get my hands on, but um, ultimately uh, over the years, it has somehow become very focused that I will do a lot of family applications. I do tons and tons of spousal applications. They could be first marriage, second marriage, third marriage, common law matter, common laws, uh, same sex, uh, where emotional quotient is high and uh, the proving of relationship is very important. So for me, it is like, like writing a new novel every time, writing a new love story. But it has also brought with me uh, a lot of, connected me to a lot of students who come to Canada as uh, international students and want to create their pathway to immigration. So I do study visas. I bring uh, people here on study visas and then they will want to go on postgraduate work permits. I do those. So for the purposes of education, um, how involved, like how much of the art, how much of a process is it for on average for you to deal with a client? Like when, when you first meet them, I'll talk to them over the phone to when you finish, like, is it a long process for a lot of people or is it a very, is it short or is it, or is it case by case? So I would say it is case by case. Um, some clients are very, uh, they're very, um, they don't trust you very easily. So they'll ask a lot of questions and I believe in satisfying uh, the person when I'm talking to someone, because if the questions are not satisfied, that means uh, somewhere they will have that doubt about me, whether I can serve them or not. So for me, whether they come to me or not, but I would like to do that properly when they ask me questions. Some consultants think that uh, educating the client is not a good practice because then why will they come to you? They will do it themselves. But according to me, educating the client as to what I can do for them is being on the transparent page, being transparent with them that what are they getting into and what I can do for them. Indeed, I think I have longer con conversation with people who do not qualify because now I don't want to break their dreams, but equally I want to let them know what are my reasons and what are the reasoning behind them not qualifying, which requirements they don't meet and why immigration will not accept their application on that behalf. Or even if the application is submitted, it will not see the light of the day. So I don't want anybody to pay me to buy a refusal. That's what I think. 
so I think I educate my clients who do not qualify more than the ones who qualify. But what has helped you the most to guide people on their journey from each client? Trust is very important. On the other hand, if I don't have the right tools to serve them, it will not work. So opportunity can come my way, but if I don't have the right tools and the expertise to serve them, it will not work. So it has to be both. It has to be um, the opportunity and the right tools. Like I initially said, I don't do refugee cases. Uh, there are a lot of other applications. Immigration has so many startup visas, business immigration. I do a few business immigration, but I don't do global talent stream. I don't do uh, startup visas because I do know I have basic knowledge, but I'm not exper expert at them. So the the I say the success will be when either you research and do your homework properly before taking on a client, or you should uh, with a very heavy heart let the client go, or uh, refer them to friends and colleagues who you know are knowledgeable and handle those kind of cases successfully. Um, because um, when you're building your brand as a consultant or in any other profession, um, that's what people look at, whether you can serve them or send them in the right direction. Uh, I can't be there for everybody, but at least the people I serve should feel that I did the justice to what I was doing for them. And thank you, Nirja, for coming on for, to answer some questions about expertise. And for anyone wanting to get more expertise on Nirja or anybody else on, on who's been interviewed on the show, check out myconsultant.ca for more information. Now let's go wrap up the show. Well, like you, I really enjoyed meeting Nirja and hearing from her about what immigration consultants do specifically and sort of the mindset behind being an immigration consultant. That was something that surprised me the most when I first heard it was that each immigration consultant has almost like a specific specialty, but it does make sense. Like I, I was upon reflection, it was like, no, it totally does. I freelance when I'm not doing this and I have specific specialties as well. So it, right. to it totally made sense. And it was interesting to hear her professional perspective on things. Definitely. She had a lot of um, interesting things to say, and I think useful things to say, too, for people who are looking to come to the country. And I think what you said about there being specializations, it definitely makes sense because beyond just the streams and, and knowing sort of um, those in particular, it's not a one size fits all. Like an immigration consultant should probably match the needs and maybe even personality of the client that they're working with. Admit, yeah, absolutely. I think everybody's case is, everybody's a case by case and everybody has their own challenges and finding people that really care. I think the biggest thing I got from both parts of the interview, because there will be more to this interview next week, ladies and gentlemen, uh, is the fact that Nirja really cares. I think that's the thing yes. that really made it go. That's the thing that really made it go. She's awesome. Yeah, beyond the need for competency and and, and skills, I think the need to be uh, truly dedicated to what they're doing is a really important part of what makes a consultant a good consultant. For more information about the topics covered in this show and other shows in the past, please visit myconsultant.ca, where you can explore up-to-date news on important issues, read in-depth articles explaining immigration and citizenship, and seek answers to your most pressing questions from a vibrant community of authorized immigration and citizenship consultants, also, check out the LinkedIn page from myconsultant.ca if you have any questions and wish to contact anyone immediately. Until next week, I'm Joshua Pantoloresco. And I'm Sarah Ostapchuk. Looking to aid and assist you guys in the coming into Canada. See you next week. Mm -hmm.